but I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you this. Human sexuality is something we don't like to talk about. We barely like to acknowledge. But it's, it's part of everything. It's always there. When Odom and Chave, you know I'm a rabbi, right? So you're not upset I'm going to, like, Bible stories and... So an Adam and Chava um, lost their, their innocence. Before the, the Eitz Hadas, so they didn't have independent consciousness. They didn't have an identity separate from God. They felt one with Hashem. And then when that got severed because of self-awareness right the the das was 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 we call it hargoshes atzma if you want the hasidic technical uh, technical term but self-knowledge made them separate from from god what was the first symptom of their self-knowledge sexual shame so you see right there how embedded it is in the human story, how deep it is in human consciousness. And when there's an injury to the self-concept, there's an injury to the sexual identity, and vice versa. When there's an injury to the sexual identity, there's an injury to the deepest level of, of, of self-concept. So, you know, we don't like to talk about it, and it's not because we're, we're overly polite and we're afraid to offend people, because it's painful. We don't like to talk about it. But anytime there is an injury to someone's personhood, their selfhood, their concept of, of who they are, it's practically synonymous with some type of sexual wound, either which caused it or which emerges from it as a, as a result. So these things are painful. These things uh, are heartbreaking. But to whatever extent it's a comfort, I don't know if it's much of a comfort, but it's, uh, I wouldn't call it a comfort, but maybe just a context. This is what happens. And, and, and the medicine for it is exactly what you've been doing and what you know how to do. What you've been doing is what you need to continue doing. You need to heal this child's sense of self. And, and where do we get a sense of self from? The first identity that we get is we borrow it from our parents. When everything goes right, when childhood goes exactly, you know, the lechat chila, 100% everything went right, if that ever happened to anyone, a child forms an identity by borrowing it from his or her parents. You figure out who you are because you are a whatever, fill in the you know, last name, family name. And if your parents have a healthy self-concept and you have a healthy bond with them, and you have those two things together, then eventually you borrow from them how they model having a healthy self-concept until you get your own self-concept. You go through a little teenage rebellion, which is par for the course, everybody does that, that's where you're figuring out how you're different than your parents, so you have to rebel, you have to stand away from them, and then you figure out who you are, who, your own identity. But where did, it, where did the process begin? Where did you get your identity from to begin with? You got it from your parents. So. When there's an injury to the sense of self, that means this person needs an identity. Or like Avi was saying earlier, when a person has a strong self-concept, when they have a sense of self-worth, it increases their ability to look for healthy situations which are less risky and dangerous, okay? So what do we come back to? We come back to increasing their identity, increasing their sense of self. Where does a person get a sense of self? From mother and father. That's it. So, yeah, it's a huge struggle. 
what you're describing your daughter's going through. But the most therapeutic thing that she could have in her life right now is her relationship with you. And from that, she'll get a sense of self, a sense of self-worth, an identity. And uh, there's nothing different. There's nothing different than what you're already doing. Even though it feels like this is, you know, there's an emergency, and this is an extra emergency, right? This is TP squared, right? But, but, it, but it's not. This, this, is, this is what it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say one more thing. When we have somebody who's in a terrible, terrible, terrible situation, we have to think, we have in the Torah, Yosef HaTzadik, who was in a terrible, terrible situation, feeling all alone, feeling on the bottom of the world. What saved him was the Musyuk Naishel Aviv. The fact that she has parents, and when she thinks of you, she's not thinking, oh, they'll kill me, they'll be embarrassed. And she can even tell you, she can tell you what she knows to you her sexual acting out, her confusion, she knows to you is the most worst possible thing that, that you could tell from parents. And that she trusts you to hold that and that you responded obviously with wisdom and compassion. That's, that's what saves her. That's what saves her. The ones who are saying, shiksa, get out of here and throwing it in. First, and they can't hold the pain and they can't hold their child. The worst part is the child then is all alone. And like Rabbi Taub said, this is a response to things that happened to her. So someone throws them down the, the, the stairs, and while they're falling, they end up breaking stuff, and we can't take the tattoo, we can't take the drug addiction, we can't take the sex addiction. We, this is a result of what was done to her that is not supposed to happen to a child. So what you did, you saved her 10 years of therapy of feeling shame and embarrassment from my parents. You, the mother and the father that represent Messiah's HaTayra, that represent the, the Shalshel's HaKadosh, and that represent stability, you embraced her. You said, you're still my child. I'm not embarrassed of you. You took away her shame. Of course, she still has shame, but not on that level. The isolation and feeling alone. The worst part of all of the sexual stuff, whether you're a victim or whether you're acting out, is you're all alone. You're all alone. There's a whole world, everybody seems to be getting along, and you can't even express it because you think that when you share it, everyone's going to look down at you and say you're a mushchis, you're, uh, uh, you're sick. Let me just add another thing, because you, you, before you move on, is when you say you're all alone, the isolation, what do you think somebody who's sexually acting out is desperately trying to achieve? Connection. Connectedness. So it's not just that isolation is the result of sexual shame. It's what perpetuates it. So you, I'm not saying stop the vicious cycle, but you did a lot to slow it down today. And like Avi says, you saved 10 years of therapy. Uh, yeah, something like that. In, the, in that ballpark. We're really good together. Yeah, we should go on the road. <laughs>